Hello, I'm Tom Britton. I'm a theater performer here in Chicago with the Danger Circus. And on behalf of wellattended.com slash blog, I'm going to answer a question. Uh, this time it is, what do you do with press clippings and why doesn't press appearances sell tickets? You went on TV in the morning show. A lot of people you think saw it. They're the number one morning show in your community and not a single ticket was sold. That's not you. That's the modern landscape. Now, I'm in my mid-40s. I grew up in an era where if you did an appearance on Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show, now Jimmy Fallon's The Tonight Show, but when Johnny Carson was heading that thing, so this is like the 60s through the 90s, I believe, but all of my youth, you went on The Tonight Show, you killed, you worked for 10 years. That was it, 10 years. In Drew Carey's case, he went on The Tonight Show, did a good set, sat on the couch. It was a big deal. If Johnny called you over to the couch, you knew you'd really killed your stand-up set. Sat on the couch, and he got a sitcom, The Drew Carey Show, and now he's on The Price is Right. Made his career, and it could do that. Doesn't happen anymore. I'll give you a couple of examples I've heard from popular culture. One is from Louis C.K. Uh, Louis C.K.'s touring agent is how I heard this. Louis C.K.'s touring agent has often said on a few podcast interviews, etc., and at parties, that Louis C.K. went on the David Letterman show. Now, that's uh, now I think Seth somebody's show. But David Letterman, big deal. Louis C.K., big deal, and killed, killed. And the next day, sold 40, 4-0, 40 tickets, and never again. There was no like selling a few more the next week or the next week. No, even in reruns, didn't sell any more tickets. 40. That's what happens. The exception I've heard to this is Howard Stern. Allegedly, and I've just heard this in the, in the ether. If you go on Howard Stern, you can sell tickets to Broadway. 125, 150 bucks each. I don't know why. I don't know why Howard's different than everyone else, but apparently Stern is special. Expect that though, because you're not Louis C.K. and you're not going on David Letterman. So cut that number down. You're like me, you're Mr. Nobody the Fire Eater, and you're going on, I'm in Chicago, it's a major market, but did you see me? No, you didn't. You had no idea it was on WGN and WCIU, and on the same week, didn't make it out to you, because I'm Mr. Nobody, and there's smaller TV shows, even in a major market. So if I'm Mr. Nobody out in Duluth, cut that down even more, which means you're going to sell negative two tickets. Your appearance on television will cost you two sales. Same thing with press write-ups. The other anecdote I want to share with you is this, it's from... Um, Oh, I've gone blank. Lewis Black. Lewis Black. If you don't know him, he's a guy who used to be on The Daily Show. Very funny comedian. Very successful comedian and playwright, actually, in his previous life. Lewis Black is checking into a hotel. This is a story I heard from him again on another podcast. He's checking into a hotel, and the young lady at the front desk, it's like Kansas City, Missouri. Not a, not a small podunk town, but a place where Lewis Black, you know, so what she does is she looks up and goes, oh my God, Lewis Black, what are you doing here? As he's checking in. You have to imagine in his kind of gruff voice, I can't do his style, but right next to her is a magazine, like one of the local rags, and his face is on the cover of the magazine. It's sitting right next to her for I don't know how many hours. She didn't even look down to go, oh, Lewis Black is coming to town. That's, oh, hey, look, there's Lewis Black, and I know why you're here. No, it didn't penetrate. All the visual noise didn't make a difference to her. So how do you penetrate that? Here's how I think it works. Think of your Facebook page, your Instagram page, or your Twitter like a TV station, right? So you have to fill from when you start programming at 6 a.m. and you stop programming at about 11 p.m. and then you just do infomercials all night. So you're a local television station. So what's on at 9 a.m.? Your killer morning show. It's two ladies drinking coffee and chatting. Hey, we got Matthew McConaughey here. He's got a new movie. Around noon, you're running Western reruns, stuff you can get for cheap. Uh, around four in the afternoon, here comes your Oprah, your Ellen, your Rosie O'Donnell, your Jerry Springer. I know these lots of these shows are canceled. I don't watch television that often. I'm not keeping up. I'm Netflix everything. Then you get into the 5 p.m. news. You get what I'm saying. Then the friends come on at seven or whatever, Breaking Bad or whatever. That's how you program. Think of your Facebook feed as that. So when I went on these morning news channels, they didn't sell a damn ticket. They didn't even come close to selling a damn ticket. Their people that are watching TV are TV watching people, not theater going people. They don't gather naturally. They aren't that type. So I might as well be begging uh, people who work in the mines to come see my show at noon. They're working in the mines at noon. That's what those folks do. They don't have the day off. Don't waste your time. Take that and put it into your Facebook feed, the YouTube clip or however you get it. You can ask them for a copy, but almost all of them now put it on YouTube or there. Station has a terrible, terrible website they're putting it on. Put that clip on your Facebook feed. It legitimizes you. That's what it does. So now your fans, your audience you've been building, see you on, I was going to say Ellen, if you're big time enough to go on Ellen, you may not have been having the problems I'm having. 
but you go on Ellen or your local version of Ellen, maybe popular TV program. Then you drop it in your feed and your mom and your aunt Rhoda go, Oh, look at that. He's doing it. More importantly, all your fans go, Oh, you know what? I've been thinking about coming to see a show. I'll buy a ticket. I never sell tickets until I put their clip on my feed and talk about it. Write a blog post, put it on your website, get it into Google. So when I search so-and-so plus fire eater, so-and-so plus magician, they get you. This is how you turn your channel into a sales channel. And I think it's the only way nowadays to make a press clipping work. On behalf of wellattended.com slash blog and the Danger Circus, my name is Tom Britton. I hope you found this informative. If you have further questions, you always can contact me. My phone number is on my website. I'm not a big deal. Thanks.